pocket door installation. Um, this set is for 30 inch because they only do it for 33 and 30 inch doors. Unfortunately, our door is 27, so I'll have to do some adjustments. It's a fairly simple system, consists of pre assembled uh, head rail, four side rails, the metal rails with the timber inserts and set of brackets and fixings. Instructions as well. Um, very clear how to prepare the opening. You start with fixing the guide screws and then you can uh, hang the brackets onto them, guide screws in the step four I think or five yeah step four you can literally hang him on so you're going to show that in a minute um, you have to allow for any floor surfaces that you're going to install afterwards um, as we got here screed that eventually is going to get tiled so I'll have to allow for that tile thickness on, on the height Marking up the center line. On the floor. So flush with the plasterboard. Plasterboard on that side. that's a line of our finished floor so I just need to reduce or get a center line between the two pencil lines and that's our center line on the pocket door there you go that's the center line 120 millimeters between the outer lines center line is on 60 millimeter for our wall we've got four by two stud wall there so the height adjustment I cut a quarter inch packets they will go underneath these brackets to accommodate for our finished floor that's going to come afterwards um, so that's going to go there and uh, now we need to uh, need to get the fixing screw a point a position from the drawing that goes height of the door 78 inches plus 28 millimeters, but it's not coming off the off the screen. It's coming off the quarter inch bracket. Uh, this quarter inch pack. Guide screws are little three quarter inch screws, like that. With, uh, with a countersink head. You have to wind them in about three or four millimeters out from the wood. Like that. So we got height, height of the door, standard six foot six door, and then extra 28 mil, and then extra quarter inch for my floor makeup, and that's the center of that line. Now, next step, we'll be fitting these end brackets, but I have to. You got them in two different brackets, one with a little metal bit that goes inside of the truck to hold the inside of the truck to it. Another side is like that. Now I have to reduce this head truck uh, for 30, uh, sorry, from 30 inch to 27 inch door. So I have to take off and reduce the opening side for it. So I have to take the truck off, cut the truck back for three inches, and then cut the timber back three inches, and then reassemble it, maintaining this gap of the truck back to the edge of the door. Mm -hmm. 
once the rail has been reduced in length and we refit it back using same screw holes and that will give us same distance and position as before. Once the rail, aluminium rail is fixed back to timber rail, we can fix these um, brackets. We're using dawn head shoulder one. on that side and three on this side. Now the brackets are fixed. Now we're going to use slightly longer 25mm screws to fix this um, into the position to the stud. So we got our guide screws. Like that. I need to just pull that screw out a little bit. They recommended about 3 millimeters, but I think it needs to be more like 6 millimeters out. There you go, one there, one there. Right. I don't think that's gonna work. You need to have a much higher headroom for that. I don't have it here. So I'm gonna improvise a little bit. I'm going to remove the guide screws and just slide this into the position. Because there's not enough room above it to twist and turn. There you go, remove the guide screws, fitted the rail up, push the rail up and then refit the guide screws back in into the same position. Um, now I'm gonna just fit the other screws, the them 25mm dome head screws. There you go. All screws fitted. Now annoyingly, their screws vary between Phillips, Phillips, Posi Drive, Posi Drive. You have to keep changing the bit on the screwdriver, of course. To position these bottom brackets, I like to obviously get the top bracket in first, top rail, and then put side wall uh, stud into the position and then use a level to plumb it down and plumb down with the bottom bracket attached to the rail I actually getting exact position exact point where to drill and fix for this bottom bracket and then the other one is gonna go like about half away between this stud and that stud there. With the bottom bracket fixed to the floor, then we can fix the top rail stud into the top rail. These screws. So just to clarify installation of the studs you can see two little slots one there and one there and that's a section which slots over the fins over these fins here phone as well. There you go, slotted. Just 
fractionally snug. Fixing through pilot drilled holes. All right, it's one pair of rails. I'm going to repeat for the center bracket. So far, installation should look like this. So we've got the top rail with aluminium rail, brackets on both sides, all screws fixed. We got four studs, four metal studs with a timber inserted, and two floor brackets. Now next step will be the installation of these hanging brackets to the top of the door. The center point of the hanging bracket has to be 160 millimeters from the edge of the door. That refers to both brackets, both sides, and the bracket itself has to be centered, centered with the door. So I'm going to mark it all up and fix it. So it's marked up 160 mil center line same there and then using a bracket as a template I pile the drilled pile drilled holes for the screws so I'm gonna do just pile the drill on that side and fix it. This is the thickness comparison between drill and the screw. You can see that the screw itself is much thicker than the drill bit. So you still want to have a good grip, good grab into the, into the door. portion is done. Now these runners haven't come assembled so we'll have to assemble them now. These are clip stops going on each side and these are runners that uh, the door glides underneath that aluminium truck. So we've got uh, right so we've got Two bolts, four nuts, and we're going to assemble it in there. And the way it goes, it will go like that with a small nut going into this section, and this other nut will go uh, in like that, like that, there. because the reason for that is this bolt will go there and this nut will go against it against it like that so I need two hands unfortunately for this it should look like this so we got a standard nut in there a washer nut facing facing the head of the bolt adjustment is done height adjustment by doing the bolt up in an inner out and uh, this nut here it's a locking nut against against the door so it can go like that okay I prepared the other one and put them onto the track now sliding these stops one goes there facing that way so you'll have to just Remove the top metal plate, slide it in, attach the metal plate, and then slide it that way to the opening side. It goes opposite, goes like this, it's a bit easier. 
um, on the hindsight they don't really say that but I think it would be easier it would be easier to fit them um, on the bench before before installation to the top but before we actually get these in the stand, I'll put two runners two gliders in because that one goes on first then we got these two gliders carriers they just simply go up on the top of the rack slide on then we got oops yeah there we go you see it goes a bit of angle bit of fiddle it goes in and that will go like that so you have to adjust these to whatever they have to fit um, as a stop for these runners once we have them installed I only put them temporarily there on the end of the truck uh, because we still don't know exact position it is 160 mil to the center uh, of this bolt on a carrier but that will be once we install the lining so I'll have to put the lining material here uh, with architrave and everything and then with the door on adjust the stops to exact position where they need to be so now we're gonna try to hook the door on I've set up the flat bar underneath the door to aid me in adjusting the height to hook the door onto these bolts whilst I'm doing that with one hand and holding the phone with the other right. like that just make sure the little ears there on the slot make sure that the bolt is fully behind the ears I can remove this and there you go it's a pocket door just need to adjust the height need to lift them up because this door is at the moment too low down to do that I need to use a little flat spanner and just keep turning that bolt until it rises up to desired position once that is done then I turn need to turn this uh, locking nut back down to secure that bolt in, in that position by the way it is size 13 size 13 spanner and needs to be raised up so we got enough clearance on the floor I need to allow for the tiled floor so I'll go about three quarter inch of the floor during adjustment of them to uh, hanging bolts make sure that you put level on the long side of the door and that reads plumb makes life much easier now once I've done that, I need to establish how far back do I want the door to go into the pocket. Um, I will have a lining on there with the architrave and I'll have a little slotted uh, screw, uh, not screw, uh, slotted handle. Um, so I will probably need the door to be sticking out about three inches. And now I need to adjust and move that stop block back there against against the wheel so it needs to be slid back until it touches that so that's my stick out of the door about three inches so i need to move this stop until it touches um, the wheel and then i can tighten up these two Bolts. And 
and that is about it is about three inches once I put a door lining on with the architecture I need about two and a half inches for my handle now this section here if you undo that you get a little clip that is coming down and then that catches against the wheel so when the door gets open it hooks on there so I'm just gonna tighten these two this one I believe needs to come down a little bit there you go. and that keeps the door in that secured in open position And also this one here will keep it in the closed position. The clip that holds the door, that clip there, and it's adjusted by this bolt by pulling it down or up. So that's when you that's almost like a latch. So when you close the door, it should latch against it. This cup here is for my door lining to fit in. Now the next step would be setting the lining. Um, I'm going to use this door lining material, five and a quarter, an inch and a quarter thickness on the latch side, and then two by one along the head and along this other side of the pocket door, along, along the pocket. So first, I'm going to secure and fix. Uh, this lining material, five and a quarter lining material to that side. The lock side has been fitted with one, two, three, four pairs of screws packed up and wedged off the, off the lining, not off the wall, nice and plumb. When you close the door, you should have a neat even line not the gap as you can see straight on now you can fit on the top two by one same uh, flush with this with, with this plane of the of the door lining on this side and then two by one sorry two by one there and then another two by one along the long edge here there you go, that's a header. It's tight against the, against the wooden frame. Flush through the sides of the lining. A little bit more there. Pinned in full position. So when you close the door, you have to make sure you leave that little gap there of a couple of millimeters um, for any paint or anything so it doesn't rub on once it's all finished. And if you remember the little piece little guide like a u-channel plastic one uh, that I had the trouble of fitting onto the screed I took it off and I glued and pinned on inside of this leg well one, one on each side you can see one is there and one is there to stop bottom of the door from rattling now the next step would be fitting the plasterboard around the uh, around the pocket of the door. 
we are fixing plasterboard into these timbers studs but the maximum uh, screw length we can use is 25 millimeters because we don't want the head of the screw to protrude uh, through the frame into the door pocket Is a half inch plywood behind the plastic book. They're only going to be half inch, so they're not going to affect uh, travel of the door. And the reason for that is uh, I need to fit two of them, one in each bay between the studs, is because um, we need to fit a towel rail radiator on that pocket door after it's all finished. So we, I do need something solid there that I can actually fix brackets, the tower rail will go there. So fitting to the plasterboard into the ply will be better.